Good. Okay, start then. Okay, so we just um, we just been just this week's very much so we've just been to um, the local councillor's surgery and um, these are two two young girls who have recently been evicted from Sweet Sway. You might have seen them. Um, there's a YouTube video. Um, thank you, thank you. Um, you would have seen them on there. Um, recently, but anyway, what's your name? Yeah. And how old are you? I'm 12 years old. And you? My name is Korta Gurnawi, I'm 13 years old. Yeah. Okay, so how, well, how what's, what's the update from you since, um, since the eviction day? Where have you been since then? What's happened? Basically, um, my family and me were in an eviction, uh, not eviction, an emergency home in um, Westminster, and um, they given up, they given us an offer in Grand Park, and me and my mum went to view it on Tuesday, and it was really horrible. There's like um, drunk people, um, people on drugs. Um, there's people who are 16 and who have children there, and um, when we went to view the home. The, it was like so dusty and I, as soon as I went into there I, I started coughing and I had to use my inhaler because I have asthma and also um, there, there isn't a window in the bathroom and like I usually wash my hair for like an hour or so so I might have an asthma attack in the bathroom and um, also they, uh, we went to the council yesterday, um, me, my mum and my dad, and they, uh, we said what will happen if we refuse Graham Park and they said well, they'll take us out of the council and we have to find ourselves a private home, but my parents can't afford it. And we said um, that uh, my school's too far away to go to because I go to Graham Barnett School and um, it takes three buses from Graham Park to get there. And um, uh, they said to me to move school but it's not as easy because people ju I'm in year seven and those are people applied to go to a secondary school last year and um, most schools would be fill up fill up by now and there isn't really like a school around the corner Mo the nearest one is one mile away and I think it's um, Cocktail which is in Hill. and um, also they, um, my school is specialist in performance arts and I, I really like that I like doing dance drama and music and I don't want to move schools because I just recently made friends there and it's really upsetting. And um, what we do on Monday, we go from May the Vale to school in Fine Barnet. Do you know how you'll get there? How you'll do that? That's like a mission of a journey, isn't it? Yeah, I have to take two buses. I have to take 18 and 134. And how long would that take, do you think? Over you one hour. And you I do have it alone? Six. No. Okay. Your mum will come. Mm -hmm. She doesn't trust me because, like, to that's go. a big long journey. Yeah. At your age, I remember, like, I you know, my so. mum was nervous of me just to walk a mile to school. You know, she made me walk with like friends and knock yeah. on people's doors and walk with other people. I used to I go got two buses. I, yeah, I used to go with my friends to school, but I can't do that anymore because I don't live in the city. Because like, usually, some of my friends they live locally around, like in Woodside Park and that, and I could meet them up and then go to school with them. But I can't do that anymore because I live in Westminster now. And, and you two were neighbours, right? Yeah, yeah. next yeah. door to me. Right, yeah. And how long were you living next door to? each other. Five years. So you're quite good friends. Yeah, we yeah. were friends since I was like six and she was like seven. Yeah. So where are you now? We're in Penfield and um in Ponders End, right? Yeah, Ponders End. Um, and what was that like having to move on because like after we saw you you had to take the key and find your emergency home, right? Yeah. And um this it's very far from my, it's very far from here. I have to take three buses and it takes me one hour and a half. One hour twenty minutes. And, and you um, go to East Barnet School. East Barnet School. And from East Barnet School I still need to take three buses. How long will that take you? It's gonna take me an hour. And how are you gonna do that on Monday morning? I know I need um, if I want to arrive on school at time on time, I need to leave the house I need to wake up at six o'clock, leave the house at six forty five and then hopefully I'll be early.
And your mum was going to work today, isn't she? Yeah. She works in North Finchley, right? Yeah, my mum goes, my mum works in North Finchley Emporium. And uh, it's uh, like, it's too long. Too so she could re literally walk to work from, from Sweets Bay or get yeah. the bus a couple of stops. Yeah. But now she's from Ponders End to North Finchley. I don't even know. Three buses. Three buses, yeah. So she's all. I know. And she was telling me that when you arrived in your home, there was. The front door didn't yeah. even lock. Yeah, it didn't shut. That's we say, uh, well, basically, ours, um, we, uh, the, the thing, the, the, in the flat, we have a flat now, and do you know the thing that you press to uh, let yourself in? Yeah. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the intercom. Yeah, intercom. And basically, um, one of us, if one of us goes out, then the other person needs to stay in our home for the whole day to come downstairs and let us in, and it's just really long. And is there any news? So we went, obviously we went to speak to the councillor today. How do you feel that went? I mean, he didn't turn up till till late or something. But how do you feel the leader of the council? Did you feel he was helpful? Did you feel he... no, not helpful? I think he's just saying that he's going to do something, but I don't think he is. No, I, I, I think he's yeah. I think he's just talking. Like I don't think he's going to like put the effort in to do something. I mean, you know, you, I showed you what he read. In, yeah. in, in the paper, um, he's got like a small, short article or short comment here. And uh, when he speaks about Sweetsway, he says um, uh, residents who are temporary tenants are being found new places to live in the area. This process has gone quite smoothly, despite the misinformation and scarcity of empty flats. Nobody has been dragged from their home. Children have not been taken away from their parents. Those who have suggested otherwise need to apologise for the anguish they have caused. How do you feel about that comment and, and, and what your situation was? Well, they don't, they don't know this our situation because they're not in it themselves. They I mean, I asked him, yeah. have you been down there? Have you witnessed any of the evictions? How can you say that no one was dragged from their homes if you didn't witness it? How do you know? Um, it was all the last minute. They just said, um, OK, um, on, just on Friday, the... Um, Three days before you're gonna get evicted, they said, "Oh, you're gonna go to Westminster." And basically, my mum was on the way for a viewing in Enfield, and because um, the, the traffic was so bad, she had to, she had to take three buses there. But, um, like they they said, "Oh, oh it's your late on. You did it on purpose," but she didn't. And then they just said, "They just said, um, okay, you're you don't get this emergency home now. You're gonna have it in Westminster." Well, to be honest, it's just a game for them because like, they haven't been in our situation and they think it's easy for us, but like. I mean, I remember being 12 or 13, and I know the things we have to cope with at any age, but I think 12 or 13 is... is it to, be honest, I, to be honest, I haven't actually lived my childhood. Like, when, but like, I, don't, I don't know what it is to be a child anymore. Like, because now I have to be, I have to be like, all, all everything. Because your dad's, your yeah, dad's my, in yeah, hospital now. Yeah, my dad's in hospital and like... My mum's trying to keep our family together, but to be honest, they're not helping. They're trying to they're trying to divide families, and to be honest, they have divided families. Yeah. And like some of your neighbours. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Do you want? Is there anything else you want to say to Barnet Council about Barnet Council, or, or to about what you feel the solutions could be about? What? I don't know. I don't know. What they could build more council houses because there's very few. Oh, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, they should do that. It's common sense, isn't yeah. it? Because there's loads, but there's more private houses, way more, and they could turn some private into council because there's loads that are empty. Like all the time I walk up the street, there's like this house is for sale. Um, there's so many they could just turn it into a council home because there's so many families who need a council home and they can't afford private home. Wages don't make me the rent. Yeah. Um, and you know, what, the, one thing, the one thing that really sticks in my throat about this way, apart from the treatment of all, of all you think that, that live there, is that, you know, once they've bulldozed your houses and once they've rebuilt your houses, 
they're not going to be, nobody can, only rich people will be able to afford them, the new yeah. ones, so that's, that's so unfair. And they, they need to do their homework, right? I mean, what, they, they know for... Four years. For four years, but, you know, OK, we're housing you these yeah. people temporarily. Yeah, and exactly. that's, what, that's what really gets me. They've known that they're, like, they're going to, like, we need to leave at some point. They need to, like, find us a house. New, like, some people can come, like, maybe there's... A, Probably there's one person in the council right now asking for a house and like in two hours or three hours he's gonna get a house just round here. So like they treat us differently, I think. And also they think it's like they're they're only finding people like they're saying it's like in this bar if you're rich you can get a house if you're poor and so that's it. And also, um, they, because they're going to make Sweet Spain to private houses, and they can't, that it's just going to be rich people who afford them, and then it's just going to be loads of people who are homeless. And because there's more people coming from different countries to India, and you have to be just like very rich to get a private home. And um, even though like loads of people might be working, they can't even afford a private home. They think it's just so easy to move schools or um, take three buses. They think there's a solution for everything that there isn't. Mm. And, and then when you when you showed um, Cats of the Cornelius your um, the video that you were in, how did you react? How did you respond? He was, he was like, to, um, we showed it, and he did, and he pretended he was on the and head, um, and then he was like, um, "Can you tell me the name of this? I'll watch this in my own time, or I'll watch this when I get home." Yeah. <laughs> Very cynical for uh, young kids. Yeah. I know. And well, yeah. Unfortunately, that's how uh, we can't even trust the people. That I mean, he's been. Uh, how long has he been a councillor? For decades, isn't it? But the problem is, uh, the thing is, rich or poor, we're, we're all human. We're all human. We all deserve the same thing. So, yeah. And a bit of dignity. And, and, not this stress and trauma yeah. causing, causing you. Anyway, well done. Thank you. And, um... Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, okay. That's okay. Two young residents of well, ex-residents of uh, Sweet Sway. Yeah. Please follow for developments, updates, Barnet Action, and Barnet Housing Action Group on Facebook. Okay. Peace out, guys. See you later.